Well, welcome to everyone. Um, tonight, we've all come together to relive a moment in history. To be more accurate, we're going to live somewhere between five and six hours of history in which a dramatic transition took place at the absolute pinnacle of the government of Tennessee. Uh, we're going to begin by watching um, a four-minute video that uh, focuses um, on that moment that climaxed uh, those hours. And, um, and then uh, we're going to try to recreate that moment in history with um, the three panelists, uh, with Lamar, our senator, uh, then soon to be our governor, <laughs> with Hal Hardin, who was uh, our U.S. attorney, and with Keel Hunt, author, author, um, whose book, um, many of you have already gotten his autograph for that, but uh, so we are happy to, um, on behalf of the First Amendment Center, um, I'm so happy to welcome you all here and to uh, share what is truly uh, unprecedented transition in government that took place um, all these years ago. I'd like to begin by asking um, how many people, I know there are some people here, you just raise your hand, how many people were in the room the night that Lamar Alexander was sworn in as governor, <laughs> Lamar was. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. And how many of you lived in Tennessee when this transition took place? Uh, that's, so it's, uh, it's a subject that's familiar to you, uh, but why don't, we, uh, why don't I ask Chris Amaker to uh, show the video now. Our heads will create small shadows but they won't interfere with the <coughs> thrust of what you're going to see. Chris? Maybe we can move back a little bit. Yeah. They, they, said, they said that it would be about right here. It'll go over here. Okay. In just a moment, uh, Jeff, it looks like we're going to be witnessing the swearing in of the 45th uh, governor of Tennessee. The Senate is directly behind Mr. Alexander. Ned Ray McWhorter is directly behind him. The Attorney General is following. And Gentry Crown is right behind them. We're expecting him to be sworn in right now. We are live at the Tennessee State Supreme Court. These are not very happy days for Tennessee. This is not a happy day for me. I believe, though, that we have been responsible and that we have kept the faith of the people by this decision. We seek the people's wisdom. If we hear the people's wisdom, our days of agony can soon go forward to days of pride. I ask for the prayers of the people. Mr. Chief Justice, I am ready to take the oath of office. Please place your left hand upon the Bible, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I, Lamar Alexander. I, Lamar Alexander. Well, as you saw, live on Channel 5 at 5.55 p.m., the state of Tennessee received a new governor, Governor Lamar Alexander. The ceremony was held in the State Supreme Court building with Chief Justice Joe Henry presiding and was preceded by brief statements by a governor-elect at that time, Lamar Alexander, stating why he was doing what he was doing and taking the oath of office. Uh, standing by his side, the Democrats John Wilder, Ned Ray McWhorter, and then the oath of office administered by Chief Justice Joe Henry of the uh, State uh, Supreme Court. Honey Alexander, his wife, you see, to uh, Governor Alexander's right holding uh, the Bible and the administration of the oath. United States. So help me God. So help me God. Let us pray. Almighty God, there is no more solemn responsibility than the responsibilities of government. Guide us in our decisions. Help us to understand our will and respond to it. Bless the state, bless our new governor. Direct him 
and all our public officials to provide the leadership and the quality of government which our people deserve. Help us to govern in the true spirit of thy word. Amen. Governor, with uh, only three days left in Governor Bland's term, why was it so imperative that you take office now? Uh, the United States Attorney from the Middle District of Tennessee called me at noon and said he had uh, substantial reason to believe that Governor Blanton was about to let out of a state prison one or more persons uh, who were the targets of a grand jury investigation into alleged payoffs uh, in connection with pardons and paroles. With that information, I concluded immediately, as I suppose the Speaker and the Lieutenant Governor must have too, that that was new and specific information that demanded that I act if I could. What's your feeling tonight? Well, I think it's uh, in many ways a very sad moment in Tennessee, but in many other ways it's a great moment. It will be recorded that Ray Blanton was his own worst enemy. I think he brought this on himself. I don't think there was any other viable choice. I think the United States Attorney today did what he had to do, and the, when they heard from the United States Attorney, I think that Lamar Alexander and the rest did what they had to do. The Attorney General, who assured me uh, during the afternoon that if I took office under these circumstances, it was constitutionally valid as an assumption of office. Uh, after the information had been presented to each of us, uh, we talked by telephone and agreed uh, that this would be uh, in the best interest of the people. And that's, from my perspective, uh, how this occurred. We now have Dave Keeler standing by at the State Supreme Court building with Lieutenant Governor John Wilder for an interview. When the United States District Attorney called myself and Mr. Aquerta and, uh, and Governor Alexander and advised us that he had uh, certain information that uh, led him to believe that there were a number of persons that were going to be pardoned and or commuted uh, shortly, uh, we had no choice, so we acted. When uh, did Governor Blanton uh, find out that this ceremony was going to take place? I'm advised that uh, he was advised of this uh, shortly before it happened by Attorney General Leach. Hank Allison is standing by there with uh, the Speaker of the House, Ned Ray McWhorter. Hank? The man you just swore in is a Republican. Uh, you are a Democrat, and, and most of the people who, who participated in the decision to swear him in early are Democrats. The man, the man you, I, first, I'm a Tennessean, and I think this is in the interest of Tennessee, regardless of the party. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, Frank, Frank's got a book right there. <clears throat> I just want to put the book up here so everybody can see how young Lamar and Ned and John were. <clears throat> Joe Henry looked old even then. Uh, <clears throat> well, I saw among uh, you uh, so many hands raised. There may be three people who were not uh, in this room who were not in Tennessee, and so I don't need, I think, uh, to delve in much of the history that preceded the moment we just saw on the screen. But, as you know, it was called in the media, it was called um, the Pardons for Cash Scandal. Um, and we had seen in the days uh, and hours immediately preceding uh, these last five or six hours, we had seen um, multiple pardons uh, signed by the governor. Governor Blanton had indeed announced uh, that he had signed many of those. Um, within uh, weeks, uh, at least two members of his administration uh, had been arrested. Uh, one, uh, um, a lawyer in his, on his staff, uh, was arrested after marked bills were found on his person. Uh, you could tell from watching that video that <coughs> John Wilder and Ned McWhorter, uh, Democrats, were uh, both deeply concerned about what had been going on. And, um, and the media had been reporting almost on a daily basis. Uh, television, we saw Chris Clark there 
um, sometimes on an hour-to-hour -hour basis. Um, and there were grave concerns.